Hello friends, welcome to Liturgy of the Word for Children for this sixth Sunday of Ordinary Time. Guess what? This is our last Sunday of Ordinary Time for a little while until after Lent and Easter. So next week we go into Lent, can you believe it already? And then Easter, and then we'll hop back into Ordinary Time in the summer, but that's like months away. So last Sunday of Ordinary Time, and we are still talking about what kind of disciples we're supposed to be. And Jesus left the best lesson for last. And it's also the best lesson because it's Valentine's Day. And his lesson this week is all about kindness and compassion, that we need to be kind and compassionate to one another. And so how perfect is that? That lines up just perfectly with Valentine's Day this year. So Miss Lorraine's going to talk to you a little bit more about that in her reflection. But for now, let's go ahead and get started on our liturgy. As always, let's begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In today's reading, St. Paul instructs the Corinthians, do everything for the glory of God. For the times that we have not glorified God in our words, thoughts, and actions, let us pause to ask for forgiveness and mercy. Lord Jesus, you are worthy of all honor and praise. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you call us to the joy of salvation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you desire to help us to be better people and to wash us from all of our sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, you teach us that you live in hearts that are good and kind. Grant that we, by your grace, may be good and kind people to become a dwelling place that is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when you eat or drink or do anything else, always do it to honor God. Don't cause problems for Jews or Greeks or anyone else who belongs to God's church. I always try to please others instead of myself in the hope that many of them will be saved. You must follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. The Word of the Lord. I turn to you in time of trouble and you fill me with the joy of salvation I turn to you in time of trouble and you fill me with the joy of salvation Oh, be glad in our God, exalt you just, rejoice all you upright of heart. I turn to you in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation.
from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A man suffered from a dreaded skin disease, came to Jesus, knelt down and begged him for help. If you want to, he said, you can make me clean. Jesus was filled with pity and reached out his hand and touched him. I do want to, he answered, be clean. And at once the disease left the man and he was clean. Then Jesus spoke sternly to him and he sent him away at once. After saying to him, listen, don't tell anyone about this, but go straight to the priest and let him examine you. Then in order to prove that everyone you are cured, offer the sacrifice that Moses offered. But the man went away and began to spread the news everywhere. Instead, he talked so much about Jesus that he could not go into a town publicly. Instead, he stayed out in lonely places and people came to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, what does this mean to us today? First of all, the one thing that I see is that this man had a dreaded disease. And if a man back then had a dreaded disease, nobody wanted to touch him. But Jesus wasn't afraid to touch him. He went right out and said, I do want to heal you. And he touched him and the man was cured. The other thing that I love about this is that the sick man knew without question that Jesus would cure him. The man was attracted to Jesus. He said, I know that you can help me. And I know that if you want to, you will help me. That's faith right away. And he just knew it right in his heart. And then the last thing that I really like is that the man went and told everyone about this, about how he was cured. And then so many people wanted to see him that immediately they knew that they were going to try and find him. Jesus couldn't go anywhere without people following him. They were so attracted to him that even when Jesus went to the lonely places far away from everyone, he would be found and Jesus would be able to give them their teachings. Hello again, my friends. Here we are in my kitchen and I'm going to show you what today's gospel means to me in a small science experiment. I hope you find it as exciting as I do. First, we have our ingredients. You will need a quarter cup of borax for every cup of water. You will need to boil some water. You will need to have a mason jar or some other kind of glass object with a pipe cleaner in a fun shape. You will need probably a fork and I'm also going to use a whisk. So borax is something, it's a chemical from the earth. And as you can see, it is a lot of different grains. Some grains are small and some grains are big. So let's think about that. These are people with all kinds of different ideas, all different people, lots of different ideas. And as the world happens, and as people keep thinking, we come up with more and more different ideas. All right, my friends, now we have this water ready to boil. And here we have all of the people who were following Moses. They knew what to do. They were all rising to the top. They were looking for God's love and they were united as one people. But then the people of the earth came back into the picture. Here we are, lots of different things. And they began to confuse themselves with God's law. They began to start seeing things in different ways. So they kept going to the temple to try and find new direction. So now we have the people going into the temple. Okay, I'm going to put these people of the earth into the temple and look what is starting to happen. Things are getting cloudy. Things are getting confused. Things are getting stirred up and they stir and they stir and they stir. And Jesus starts to go to the temple and he starts to teach people about what people are needing to do in order to change themselves. It's taking a long time, my friends, 
to look over what God's teachings are. Things become more clear to some people. There are still some people still on the ground wondering if Jesus' teachers were, and his teaching, were doing the right thing. But some knew in their very hearts. Some people like the leper in today's gospel. My goodness, can you see what we've got here? I made two hearts, one pink and one red. And let's see. Oh, my dear. Look at that. I hope you can see that very well. It almost looks like rock candy. Look at that. Now don't eat this at home if you decide to make these with your parents because this is not the same as sugar. Look at that. Oh, wow. I'm going to put that back in there now. I wonder how what would happen day after day after day. More and more people became attracted to Jesus and I'll bet it got to the point where people were so attracted to him. He had to go to lonely places, just like it said in the Bible, because that was the only place where so many people could gather to hear his words. All right, my friends, that's my lesson about today's gospel. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, as we think about Valentine's and what we are attracted to, think about what attracts you to Jesus. What attracts you to being a part of the body of Christ. I hope to see you at the Casa soon, but definitely on our Zoom meetings. Bye-bye. God bless. Together, let us make our profession of faith. We believe in God the Father, who made the whole world. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who was born in Bethlehem and lived among us, who died on the cross for us and rose from the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who brings life and love to us all. We believe that the church is one family and that one day we will share everlasting life with God in heaven. Amen. Just as Jesus was moved with pity at the plight of the leper who approached him in today's gospel, we know our God is one of endless compassion, secure in his desire to restore us and heal us. Let us bring our needs before the Lord. For God's holy church, strengthened by the kindness and empathy of God, May we be a community where all are welcome to worship in joy and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For medical workers throughout the world who place themselves at risk to care for others, may they be protected and renewed in mind, body, and spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been cast out and left alone due to illness or prejudice, may they find community and know their worth as children of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us who are gathered here for this liturgy today, even in the midst of hard times, may we know the joy of living life in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we have been created in your image and likeness, and we are restless until we rest in you. Hear our prayers that we might give you glory with our words and actions and so build the kingdom of God here on earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. That's it for this week, my friends. Happy start to Lent coming up, Ash Wednesday, which means that Tuesday is a fun day. 
just settle your hearts, find your kindness and your compassion, and I'll see you here next week. Bye.